So we need a notation for the collection of all matrices of a given size. And we use F M N. So this is the set of all M by N uh, matrices. with entries in F. Okay, and so that's um, as usual. M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. So if you're looking at an element of uh, this set and you've got A sub uh, three, five, then that means you go down by three and over five in order to find that entry in the matrix, having started from the top left corner. Okay, so now we've got operations for how to add matrices together and so forth. So for two matrices A and C, which are both of the same size, so whenever I write something like this, A and C are in F to the three comma two or something like that, it just means I'm fixing them to both have that particular size. So we define uh, the sum by giving the value of their entries. And so the uh, entry in the jth row kth column of the sum is just defined to be the uh, entry in the jth row uh, kth column of A plus the j row kth column of C. And so that's well defined then by the fact that we have arithmetic in our field. And if we have a scalar and we wanna look at a scalar multiple, we do the same thing. We define what the scalar multiple of A is by saying what its uh, j kth coordinate is. So the j kth coordinate of this scaled guy uh, is just lambda times the jth coordinate of the original one. And so it's the usual thing. Uh, we're doing all of our arithmetic uh, coordinate wise. So whatever happens in coordinate two comma three has nothing to do with whatever happens in coordinate four comma six. So, and then it comes as a surprise to absolutely no one that in fact, with these operations, uh, FMN, is a vector space. And so, <clears throat> um, let me just specify under these operations. And that's pretty straightforward. I, I'll leave it to you to think about, but how you might check those, uh, those claims of closure and so forth. In this case, the, uh, the, the zero, uh, the zero of uh, this this collection of matrices is is just the one that has um, m zeros going that way and n zeros going this way and every single single entry in it is zero and you should have no trouble convincing yourself that that's an additive identity for this space. Um, then we have uh, another theorem. And so the book calls this one, well, actually it calls it a couple things here. I'll, I'll, I'll number them by, by parts. So let's see. So suppose we have um, two linear maps from V to W. And we've uh, fixed uh, a basis for, for each of these guys. Then uh, script M is itself a linear map from this vector space into F M N. And so what I'm saying is that this, this idea that uh, there's a matrix that corresponds to every linear transformation once you fix the basis. Well, we're making that precise now. And so I'm, repl I'm re replacing 
corresponds to with the fact that we actually have a bona fide linear map between the space of linear maps and the space of matrices. Yes, yeah, so that's sort of a horrendous thing, but um, M here is actually an element of L from L V W to F M N. So we've, that's how we formalize this correspondence. Um, <clears throat> so this thing here, uh, oh, you know what? I, I, I didn't finish my sentence. Um, this, this map from LVW to FMN is linear. So it's a linear map. And this is uh, broken down into two theorems in the book. So the one 3.36 is, is additivity. So this is that the matrix of the sum of two transformations is the sum of the matrices of the individual transformations. And then there's also uh, 338, which is that the uh, matrix of a scalar multiple of a transformation is the same thing as the scalar times the matrix of the transformation.